first of all, I could just see when I opened the text that it was just like coming through multiple texts. And the first thing said, Rory, I'm going to be brutally honest. What's the difference between a great story and a mediocre story? <laughs> uh, the way it's told is the difference between a great story and a mediocre story. Everyone has a story. Everybody, everybody has a story. Like people that you think maybe are inherently boring. Well, like why, why are they that way? For instance, I don't know, if, did you see the movie Everything, Everywhere? Like the Jamie Lee Curtis character, she's an accountant and on the surface incredibly boring, but becomes very interesting. So it's all about how you tell the story. And I, I had heard a criticism of myself once saying like, he doesn't have a, a directing style. And I, to me, I try to, whatever is services the story best, I'm willing to do. So in my documentaries, I've had animation. I've had recreations. I've had narration. I've had no narration. I've had verite. Uh, I've had anything you can do, I'm willing to do because I think every story is different. Uh, for the History Channel film, I mentioned that we were going to do recreations and right away, like red flags at History Channel. They're thinking it's like the E True Hollywood story recreations. And I'm saying, no, they're going to be abstract. They're going to be shot really well. So I actually did a test to show them. Uh, we went out and, and just did it for like one act of the, the movie. It was a two hour movie and just to show them what it'd be like. And then it kind of put them at ease of, of how this was going to be. So I don't think there's any mediocre stories, just mediocre storytellers. When someone gave you that note, did they do it to you directly or did they, did you hear it secondhand from someone? No, they do it directly. Yeah, they're very direct. And, um, you know, one thing that <clears throat> I try to do too in my relationships with people or clients, but also in the way I tell stories is using humor because humor diffuses uh, tension quite a bit. It also brings people's defenses down. So when some, so I find like, you know, if I can joke and, and, and keep things light, it's usually good. And if you can do that uh, in your documentary or film too, they say you make them laugh and you make them cry. So if you can make people laugh, like for instance, in the Nature Boy documentary about Ric Flair, a lot of funny moments in it, funny stories, funny animation. And I think it really brings people's defenses down so that when you learn about his son passing away from a drug overdose, it really hits you in the gut. And, and I like doing things that don't necessarily sp spell out exactly what you should think or feel. It's, to me, it should be like music. It can be interpreted many different ways. And so I don't want to say like, hey, this person's bad and you should feel that they're bad. It should be like, you know, here's what they did and here's the plus, here's the minus, and what do you take away from it? So um, in regards to notes, which I think was your question, um, yes, I try to be direct and, and I try to also like be open. It's, it, there is a bad quality that maybe exists more in Hollywood of like passive aggressiveness where people are like, it's great. And then like you leave the room like, oh, it's terrible. Like, just tell me it's terrible. For instance, with my first uh, scripted movie, Grace Point, I got, I sent the first rough cut to Rob Lowe, who just asked to see it, his son's in it. Plus he's just a very intelligent guy, very seasoned, smart, and I got a text back. First of all, I could just see when I opened the text that it was just like coming through multiple texts. And the first thing said, Rory, I'm going to be brutally honest. <laughs> and when someone says the, the saying, I'm going to be brutally honest, it's never like something positive comes after. It's not, Rory, I'm going to be brutally honest. You're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so he was going to be brutally honest that he thinks the movie sucks and all the reasons why. Now, he didn't say that, but he, he laid it out. And that's one of the things I appreciate about him is he's direct. He, he didn't say, yeah, the movie's great, and then like talks trash about me or something. So I took his notes to heart after I was uh, a little upset, gave myself like a day to be upset about it. And then 
decided, uh, you know, I was gonna try to listen to this guy. Maybe he knows what he's doing. At first I read him, I'm like, oh, what an idiot. But now, then I was like, wait a second. This guy's done a lot more than you have. Um, and I'm glad I listened. I'm glad that I took his notes to heart. And that is much more what I would want. If, as long as I can respect the person, you know, that we're going in it with the same plan to make something good. Now, sometimes you can be on a totally different page with someone and their motivation is not even to make something good. I did a show with Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, and I got the impression the network maybe wanted more of like a reality show, like a keeping up with the Kardashians, kind of like scripting scenes. Well, Shaq didn't want to do that. In fact, he wanted to do it more like a documentary. So now you're having two different worlds kind of colliding here. Somebody wants like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Other person wants to do more of a verite documentary. We kind of met in the middle a little, um, but there you, you are having some diametrically opposed views. But most of the time, you, they just want something good, you know, and you want something good. And a lot of it's subjective. This is one thing I do tell friends and other filmmaker showrunners. You get one battle to fight usually, one. So pick your battle. Everything else, if you want to keep working with these people, you're gonna have to compromise on. But there should be one thing that you're like, I'm not compromising on this. And 99% and, and of the time, they'll let you have it because they appreciate you doing the rest. Well, you had said earlier about how you don't mind friendships and work blending because mm -hmm. it's a good idea to work with people that you like and that people that you like will tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I think it's important too when people that you don't like will definitely tell you the truth, how they deliver it mm -hmm. is, is also different, you know? Well, a lot of times it's not, not what you say, but how you say it. I mean, think about people who yell at somebody, you know, it's not what the information is, but it's how it's being delivered. So I tried to be very sensitive about that on my film set. I, I watched these videos on this fantastic YouTube channel, Film Courage, and they tell people who have been through the trenches and it's important to see what, what to do, what not to do. And I wanted to have a very good atmosphere. Like that was very important for me on my film, like a very good set environment. People are having a good time, not, not, not like a good time, like they're partying or anything, but that they just feel there's like a lightness to it, that we're all in this together. And I learned that actors are different. Like I had never really worked with uh, actors in this type of environment before. I've worked with them as like a narrator, but this was way different. And I learned different actors, different, different situations and how, how they want to be treated. I had one actor, Sean Carrigan, uh, excellent actor, been in a lot of things. He's a former boxer. So he likes to be like, tell, tell me what to do, coach. I'll do it. Hey, Sean, can you cry? Cry, doing it. Let's do it. Boom, tear. He's just like, whatever you need. Angry, he'll do angry. Sad, whatever. He just wants to be pleasing to the director who in his mind's like a coach. Another actor on the movie, this guy, Jim Parrick, incredible actor. I don't think I fully appreciated how good of an actor until I actually saw him on the big screen. His presence, everything. I mean, uh, big guy, six, like five, intimidating. You know, I'm kind of short myself. I can walk under most kitchen tables. I'm a, little, I'm a little guy, I'm like five, six. So on a good day, I'm five, six. So automatically, I'm like looking up at him while we're talking. And he, as an actor, will not do anything, anything, unless he feels his character is motivated to do it. Hey, you're, you're supposed to take a drink here. Well, I'm not thirsty. No, but it's written here, you take a drink. I'm not thirsty. So right away, this can be like, this could be a nightmare for some directors. He told me his favorite actor was Robert Duvall. And I said, well, why, why Robert Duvall? And apparently Robert Duvall said, he wants a director to just shut up and leave him alone. And I guess Francis Ford Coppola did that for him. So I was like, hmm, okay, good notes to have here. <laughs> so uh, we have this scene, one of my favorite scenes in the movie, where Jim Parrick's character Cutter 
is by a lake and he's remembering something very personal. And we shot this at the magic hour when the sun's setting. It couldn't look more beautiful. And he has to do this kind of emotional thing. And he said, he said, Rory, you get, you get one take out of this. So make sure you get my master in it. Now it's an independent film. We're shooting with one camera on prime lenses. And uh, I wanted to do two shots. You know, I don't want to just do one shot. And I, and my DP and I had this other shot besides the close up where we see Cutter and then we see John Owen Lowe's character in the background, kind of defocus watching him. And I love that shot. So I said to my DP, let's start with that shot. My DP's like, are you sure? He just said, and I go, I really want to do that shot. He goes, yeah, me too. So I said, well, let's start with that. So we do that shot and it's great. Jim Parrick, tear down the cheek, it's awesome. But I still need to do his close up. So I'm like, well, how do I handle this? You know, should I say, I'm the boss, you better do it. I'm the boss. Well, that's not gonna work with this guy. <laughs> that's gonna be a bad scene. So um, I pull him aside privately, privately, off to like a tree off in the woods where we were filming. And he's like, he's like, how was that? Was that good? Gives me a fist bump. I'm like, that was awesome, man. Now I said to him, I think I screwed something up there. Look, you were so incredible and I'm really worried that I didn't get it. And it's a hundred percent my fault that it happened this way. And is there any way, like, I know, you are empathetic to this. Can, can, can you be empathetic to me? Give me one more take because I'm worried that I'm gonna get back in the edit and not have what we need. And I, I don't know what to say, I just messed up. And he looks at me, he's like, we got it, don't worry, don't worry. He like kind of pats me on the back. So he does it, motivated him through pure pity on me. <laughs> and uh, he even did a better take that time. He got a tear, tear. And uh, I told him that story at the premiere and he was like, you SOB, but you know, he was like, ah, I was good. So it's just like, how do you get what you need? It's not necessarily like how you do it, but do you get the result that you want? So hopefully that's a good example.